Hello and a very good morning. You're watching the Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha Television. I'm your host Frank Pereira. Let's begin as always with the latest headlines. Fresh controversy over remarks about Hindu Rashtra. RSS chief says opposition must support ban on conversions. An ultimate day of parliament today. Janta Parivar plans a protest to target the central government on various issues. Flights delayed due to dense fog, normal life disrupted as North India shivers under severe cold wave conditions, several trains also cancelled. And India seeks UN clarification over reference to alleged 2611 mastermind Hafiz Saeed. Pakistan assures it will not free Zakir Rahman Lakhvi, the second accused in the case. Well, our top focus on the bulletin this morning, a day after RSS chief Mohan Bhagwat called India a Hindu Rashtra, senior Vishwa Hindu Parishad leader Praveen Togadia on Sunday declared that efforts will be made to increase the percentage of Hindus in the country. He also said Bhagwat's assertion is like a gospel for the VHP. Togadia was addressing a function in Bhopal. Togadia is the international working president of the VHP. On the same theme, RSS General Secretary Bayaji Joshi told a function in Haridwar that religious conversions should be stopped. The RSS is insisting that the nation should enact a strong anti-conversion law, a stand that the ruling BJP is supporting in parliament. A day after BJP distanced itself from the controversial religious conversions in some parts of the country, RSS came out in strong defense of what it calls gharvapsi or homecoming. RSS chief Mohan Bhagwat said that the center should bring a law to ban forceful conversions. <laughs> हमको किसी को बदलना नहीं है हिंदू किसी के बदलने पर ऐसा विश्वास नहीं करता हिंदू कहता है परिवर्तन अंदर से होता है लेकिन हिंदू को परिवर्तन नहीं करना है तो हिंदू का भी परिवर्तन नहीं करना चाहिए इस पर हिंदू आज अड़ा है रिक्वेस्ट दी पार्लियामेंट अपोजिशन पार्टी इन राज्यसभा टू प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड द स्पिरिट ऑफ पार्लियामेंट्री डेमोक्रेसी I only appeal to the opposition parties, please at least these two days allow the parliament Rajya Sabha to function. On Saturday, the VHP reportedly converted around 200 Christian tribals in Gujarat's Valsad. This is the second major report of conversion after 57 Muslim families were converted in Agra earlier this month. RSS chief stand and the organization's ongoing Gharvapsi program sparked fresh criticism from opposition parties. Every statement and action of the RSS and its organizations has serious implications for this country and that is why the Prime Minister has a responsibility to this country to speak out against these totally unconstitutional statements and steps. अगर कोई अपनी मर्जी से करता है तो बिल्कुल ठीक है। RSS के चीफ बोल रहे हैं कि सारे देश को हिंदू बना देंगे। उसके बारे में वंकया क्या बोलेंगे? उनके खिलाफ कोई कार्रवाई करेंगे? इस तरीके से देश को बर्बाद करने की एक साजिश है। The opposition ire comes after a week-long uproar in Parliament over the controversial issue. Both houses saw frequent disruptions over demands of a statement by the Prime Minister. So far, the PM has maintained silence, barring reported warnings to MPs to refrain from controversial statements. Ruling BJP, however, has called for legislation against forceful conversions. We are doing what we are doing. We want to तो जो सरकार कानून बनाना चाहती है तो उनको पहल करनी चाहिए मंडे विल सी द पेनल्टीमेट सिटिंग ऑफ द ऑनगोइंग विंटर सेशन विद डेडलॉक रिमेनिंग बिटवीन द गवर्नमेंट एंड द ऑपोजिशन ऑन द इशू देयर कुड बी फ्रेश अपरोर इन पार्लियामेंट ऑन मंडे ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी वेल जॉइनिंग मी फॉर अ चैट दिस मॉर्निंग ऑन दिस वेरी सब्जेक्ट इज सीनियर जर्नलिस्ट जॉन दयाल गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग यू नो the RSS or the Sang Parivar is calling it Garvapasi. The BJP is condemning the conversions uh, that are taking place across the country. But the RSS is, uh, you know, going ahead with this uh, nonetheless. Uh, I mean, the Sang Parivar, uh, not just the RSS, of course. So your take on the entire Garvapasi uh, issue. I was amused by Dr. Togaria's statement that they would take some steps to increase the population of Hindus in this country. I think mm -hmm. one step could be to request every non-resident Indian to immediately come back 
and the population would go back, go up by two crores. But of course, I don't think he's talking great sense. This is a very, very old debate, and it was there when the British were here. It was there in the so-called independent Rajwadas. And it has continued. But the constitutional debate on the issue of religion took place in the Constituent Assembly. And it was a very long debate. And it was there that Hindu members of parliament, Hindu leaders of the Congress party said, religions and the protagonists have the freedom to profess, practice, and propagate their faith, encourage their culture, run their institutions. And that was put into the Constitution of India. And that is final. So a debate on conversions has taken place. Mm. But the BJP has resisted that freedom given in the Constitution. And it is not Mr. Modi or the RSS now. Prime Minister Atal Bihari Bajpayee was a very, was a gentleman, very politely called for a debate. We went and met him. Archbishop Alad Elastic and I met him and told him that the debate had already taken place. We also told him that one of the fathers of the constitution, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, himself converted from Hinduism to Buddhism and took with him in a mass conversion 500,000, 5 lakh Mahars to Buddhism. And that was the first test that it was a freedom that could be exercised. But the point really is, what, there are only two things that a person can change. His nationality, as the NRIs have done, mm. or his faith. The rest of the things, his birth, his skin, his caste, all of them are fixed in time till the moment of his death. So this call for conversions and garvapsi poses many questions. One of the questions is, is there a freedom of conscience that the soul has the freedom for its yearning? Mm. I want to become a Hindu, I should be allowed to become a mm. Hindu. The second part is, does anybody have the right to forcibly convert somebody? The Supreme Court is clear. Nobody has the right to convert anybody, but the person has the right to be converted. Mm. And you have to balance these two. The third is the tricky point, the call for Hindu Rashtra. India patently the population has a majority of Hindus in it. But India is not a theocracy as Saudi Arabia is, as Pakistan practically is, as Bangladesh practically is. India is a secular hmm. democracy and it was secular long before the word was put into the constitution by Mrs. Indira Gandhi and socialist. So India is a secular democracy where everybody lives. And therefore, the, what is the concept of the Hindu Rashtra? Where do I go? I, I, I'm a senior journalist, but I'm also a Christian and my, so are my children. Where do we go? We are not aliens. We are part of this culture. Christianity is not new. It's in India 2000 years. But Christ was born 2014 years ago. Mm. So every Christian in the world has been converted from something or the other. Mm. But I am home now. What is my homecoming? I am already home. The constitution is very, very clear. Mm. And I think we should stick to the constitution. These laws exist mm. in Arunachal, Himachal, Odisha, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, and Gujarat. They are enacted but not passed in Rajasthan. They were enacted and withdrawn in Tamil Nadu. Mm. So these laws have been tried and they don't mean anything. Nobody has been prosecuted for forcible because forcible conversion is bad in law, is bad in religion. Yes. It is not. And lastly, mm. For, these laws have been there for more than 30 years, mm. 35 years. I would like to know how many people have they prosecuted. Okay. So, a new anti-conversion <coughs> law as is, is, not being, required. As is being mulled by you know, the BJP and the RSS is not required at all. Not at all. In fact, mm. we have been arguing very forcibly and very forcefully in court and elsewhere that the six laws must also be withdrawn forthwith. Mm. They are an insult to the constitution. They are an insult to the conscience and the freedom of the people and they're bad in international law and the United Nations conventions. All right, we'll have to leave that at that, uh, John Dayal. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and uh, putting things into perspective and sharing your views with us on the channel. Thank you and a Merry Christmas. Yes, a Merry Christmas to you too. And uh, let's move on now, of course, uh, and uh, talk about some other significant developments to have taken place. Days after the school attack in Peshawar, the Pakistani 
Army has intensified operations and strikes in Taliban strongholds in retaliation against the attack. It has also carried out a number of executions. But India has been stunned by developments relating to at least two of the alleged masterminds of the 2611 Mumbai attack case. One being a UN reference to Hafiz Saeed and the other was a, the bail given to Zakir Rahman Lakwi. Yes, more. India is likely to seek a clarification from the United Nations after the world body prefixed a respectful sahib to India's most wanted terrorist, Hafi Said's name. The horrific incident occurs in a UN Security Panel's reference to Said by Gary Kilan, the chair of UN Security Council Committee, in a letter dated 17th of December. UN no nahi. उनको टेररिस्ट डिक्लेयर किया है उसकी संस्था को टेररिस्ट संस्था डिक्लेयर किया है उनके ऊपर इनाम भी घोषित किया है यूएनओ ने तो यूएनओ उनको कोई सम्मान नहीं दे सकता Meanwhile Pakistan has assured India of challenging the bail of Zakir Rahman Lakhvi a key mastermind of the 2611 attacks Lakhvi was granted bail last week but will be in detention for at least 3 months in another case मेरे ख्याल है इस पे जो खबरें आई हैं वो तो बहुत क्लियर है मेंटेनेंस पब्लिक ऑर्डर के थ्रू उसको दोबारा गिरफ्तार किया गया ताकि रिहाई ना हो और मेरा ख्याल है कि उसमें अपील भी की जा रही है अगेंस्ट द बेल क्योंकि ये एमपीओ तो बहुत लिमिटेड पीरियड का होता है और हमारी तरफ से जो बॉम्बे का ट्रायल है वो काफी स्पीड से चल रहा है दैट वॉज अ जुडिशल ऑर्डर uh and uh, immediately after that the government uh, moved very swiftly and uh, uh put him under house arrest uh, and uh, the government also uh, plans to challenge the bail order Continuing punitive action in the wake of the Peshawar Army School massacre, Pakistan executed four more terrorists. These four were convicted for the attack on former President Parvez Musharraf. It is the second execution in Pakistan in three days. Ninety-seven kids have been killed. In this situation, I have also mentioned that in the Eighty-fourth Supreme Court, the appeal was taken. Eighty-fourth High Court. और चौदह मशन में सदर के पास रैम की अपीलें हैं जब ये रैम का अपीलें सदर से मुस्रद हो गया तो इस इन इस पर पानसी का अमल दरामद होगा पाकिस्तान इज मूविंग डिसाइसिवली अगेंस्ट टेररिज्म एंड वी होप दैट गुड रिजल्ट्स विल बी अचीव इस वाक्य के बाद और ये जो फांसियाँ लगी हैं और और जो हमारी अफवाह जो कार्रवाइयाँ कर रही हैं वहाँ तो पाकिस्तान के तूल और में वहां बहुत सारी इंटेलिजेंस पिक हो रही है कि वो अब काउंटर एक और इसी किस्म की वैश्याना और गैर इंसानी कार्रवाई के लिए फिर तैयार हो रहे हैं Seeking severe punishments for the terrorists, relatives of Peshawar school attack victims are also keeping up the pressure. All eyes are on the government to see if it now makes the Peshawar attack a turning point in its strategy against terror. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV Well intense cold wave prevails in North India minimum temperatures continue to dip affecting normal lives National capital Delhi saw a foggy morning with temperatures touching 4.9 degrees Celsius almost 2 degrees below normal Chandigarh had a minimum temperature of 7 degrees Srinagar was a bone chilling minus 2 degrees while Lucknow and Agra recorded 4 and 5 degrees Celsius respectively Flight and train services were delayed or cancelled in many places due to fog. The Met Department has predicted more snow in the hilly areas while foggy conditions are likely to continue. Sunday was the coldest especially for Delhi when temperatures uh, were at uh, 6.4 degrees Celsius. Severe cold wave conditions and dense fog have hit normal life in most parts of northern India. Residents of Rajasthan, Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh are grappling with the biting cold as mercury dropped to near freezing point on Sunday. Churu in Rajasthan recorded a minimum temperature of 0.5 degrees Celsius while Narnaul in Punjab remained the coldest place in the state with a low of 1.6 degrees Celsius. In Haryana, Hisar settled at a low of 1.8 degrees Celsius, while national capital Delhi shivered at 6.4 degrees Celsius, making it the coldest day this season. ठंड में सवारी मिलना मुश्किल हो गया है, रोजी रोटी चलाना मुश्किल हो गया है। यही बारह-बारह के डेढ़ ड्यूटी करने हैं, यही बोनी भी नहीं कर दे, आपने कोलों रोटी पानी खा के 
ਤੇ ਚੱਲ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਆ thick fog and mist have disrupted traffic movement in most parts of northern india low visibility due to dense fog led to an accident in kadura area of uttar pradesh in which eight people are reported to have been killed several flights and trains have been cancelled due to the foggy weather many trains are running behind schedule dhund itni zyada hai ki gaadiyon ka chalna hi mushkil hai aawagaman mein bahut pareshaniyan ho rahi hain in jammu and kashmir the chilai kalan which is the 40 day period of harshest winter began on sunday This is the period when even the day temperatures drop drastically freezing most of the water bodies including the famous Dal Lake. The Met Office has predicted widespread rains or isolated snowfall in Jammu and Kashmir over the next 24 hours. आज यहां पे जलाई कलान स्टार्ट हुआ है ऊपर आप देख सकते हैं सेकंड फेज पे बहुत बर्फबारी हुई है फर्स्ट फेज पे भी बहुत बर्फबारी हुई है आम तौर पे देखी गई है कि बर्फबारी भी होती है इस टाइम पे बारिश अक्सर होती है और दुन तो रहती है फॉग काफी रहती है इस टाइम में According to Met Department the winter chill will intensify in the coming days across North India with the day temperatures also dropping to new lows fresh snowfall in the hilly regions will add to the extreme cold conditions Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV Well it's time for a short break now but up next uh, after the break winter session of Punjab assembly is to begin we'll tell you all about it stay tuned we'll be right back back you're watching Rajya Sabha television well let's take a look now at what's lined up for the day today in our segment the day ahead three group janta parivar parties are expected to stage a maha dharna at jantar mantar in new delhi the six constituents of the political formation will target the narendra modi government over various issues including its failure to fulfill election promises the parties include the samajwadi party the jdu rjd jds sinld and the sjp Bangladesh President Muhammad Abdul Hamid will visit West Bengal today. He is slated to meet Governor Keshri Nath Tripathi. Also included in his itinerary is a visit to Shantini Ketan. It is the first ever visit by a ceremonial head of Bangladesh. In the coal scam case, a Delhi court will consider the CBI's charge sheet against Madhu Koda. The former Jharkhand Chief Minister was charged sheeted for offences that include criminal conspiracy and cheating. The Delhi High Court is slated to hear a petition filed by Aam Aadmi Party leader Somnath Bharti. Bharti has uh, challenged the NHRC order holding him guilty of racial prejudice and unlawful acts against 12 African women during a controversial midnight raid early this year. The Securities Appeal Tribunal will hear real estate company DLF's petition challenging a SEBI ban from accessing capital market for 3 years. The SEBI imposed the ban on DLF chairman KP Singh and five officials for alleged non-disclosure in filing 2007 IPO. The winter session of Punjab Assembly will start today. The main opposition the Congress is expected to target the ruling Shirmani Akali Dal BJP government on several issues including drug abuse and the enforcement directorate summons to revenue minister Bikram Singh Majithia. The Tamil Nadu government will release 30 Sri Lankan fishermen and 19 boat chief minister O Pandir Selvam has uh, urged Prime Minister Narendra Modi to ask Sri Lanka to reciprocate similarly to free fishermen held in Lanka. We got now India's frontline combat aircraft Sukhoi 30 fleet was recently cleared after being grounded for nearly a month while the air force expressed satisfaction over safety checks questions still remain about its long term future and cost to indian security our correspondent palak sharma has this report Once known as the pride of the Indian Air Force the Russian made fighter jet fleet Sukhoi is staring at a bleak future The last Sukhoi 30 crash took place in Pune in October. Maintaining the depleting fleet of 200 planes has cost the government no less than 2263 crores in the last 3 years. All this money was spent on repairs alone. There are some design problems. There are also some problems of uh, technical nature, uh, maintenance nature in terms of overall. And lastly, what is the type of quality control inspection and monitoring that is done 
at Indian plants wherever HAL has the uh, the overhaul uh, facility for the Sukhoi 30. It's a range of issues. The Sukhois have been involved in five accidents in the last five years. On 30th April 2009, a Su-30 MKI crash in Pokhran, Rajasthan killed one of its two pilots. Another Su-30 MKI crashed on 30th November 2009 in Jathegaon, about 40 kilometers from Jaisalmer. Both crew members ejected safely. The incident forced the entire fleet of Su-30 MKIs to be grounded. On 13 December 2011, a Su-30 MKI crashed, but the two pilots ejected safely. On 19 February 2013, the Iron Fist exercise rehearsal saw yet another crash at the Pokhran. The aircraft was on a night flying training mission. The last crash was on 14 October 2014, when an Indian Air Force Su-30 MKI on a training mission crashed 20 kilometers off the Pune Lohegaon Air Force Station. The air crew ejected safely. This is our front end of combat capability of the Indian Air Force for the next 40 to 50 years. We cannot allow this critical program of Indian air power, combat air power, to have any deficiencies. So I think it's an issue to be resolved collectively. The Sukhois were inducted in 1997 and there are also plans to bring in more jets in the coming years. But given the cost of maintaining them, the question is, are they worth the expense? India's Su-30 MKI fighter jets are a pride of its fleet, with no doubt over its reliability and security. However, with India's huge dependence on the Sukhois, its maintenance and deep modernization that will retain the aircraft's efficiency for decades to come cannot be taken lightly. Palak Sharma in New Delhi for Rajya Sabha TV. Well, women's safety is in focus after the rape of a young female executive allegedly by a driver employed by a cab service. More women are demanding women cab drivers, but despite the advantages of employing them, the companies say that they find it hard to survive. Hello, Papa. I'm calling you from when? I'm not calling you. How are you going to the house? I took a taxi. Really? Taxi is not in the night. Oh, Baba, you listen to me. Hold on one second. No, tell me the taxi number. Yes, don't do it. I'll get you to your son. With all women drivers, Sakha started a unique initiative four years ago. Today, it's the most sought after cab service. Customer inquiries have doubled after the recent rape incident that shook the national capital. Honestly, considering what's happened with uh, Uber and things like that, I would prefer a female cab driver to be safe because it's not like, because now us working women, we need transportation, we need to leave our offices late. So in terms of having a female driver, we would feel slightly more safe. 21-year-old Lalita loves driving. It makes her feel confident. And for the last three years, it's also given her the privilege of playing chauffeur for actor Amir Khan. Driving करने से पहले हम self defence की training लेते हैं, English सीखते हैं, computer सीखते हैं, plus mechanical काम सीखते हैं, Red Cross प्राथमिक चिकित्सा सिखाया जाता है। Saka has nearly 60 trained women drivers. Each of them drives a vehicle fitted with a GPS device and armed with pepper spray and emergency button. The service has its share of problems, including lack of funds and a sluggish regulatory process. What we actually want to do is have women in more phases of public transport, in all possible phases of public transport, thereby making public transport as a whole safer. So we want to have women driving buses, we want to have women driving auto rickshaws. The recent rape involving a taxi driver employed by the Uber cab service has prompted the government to encourage more women drivers on the road. The Uber incident on 5th December has no doubt prompted a rethink about online cab services, but several companies in Delhi say it's a losing battle for survival and one they can only win with the government's support. Anshu J. Singh's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Moving on to some international news now. A gunman shot two New York police officers uh, on patrol in Brooklyn late on Saturday. The killing is seen as a possible revenge attack after the gunman posted online messages claiming to avenge Eric Garner's death. U.S. President Barack Obama strongly criticized the killing. Here's more. The U.S. flag flies half-mast in the police station building after a gunman ambushed and fatally shot two New York police city officers on point blank in Brooklyn. 
Later, the gunman shot himself. Officer Ramos was in the driver's seat and Officer Liu was in the front passenger seat beside him. According to witness statements, the suspect, who has been identified as 28-year-old Ismail Brinsley, walked up to the police car. He took a shooting stance on the passenger side and fired the weapon, his weapon several times. Hinting at simmering tensions over the recent police atrocities in the US, the gunman had posted several anti-police messages online. The gunman, identified as Ismail Brinsley, wanted to avenge the death of Eric Gardner, who was shot by two New York City police officers. Officials said that shortly before the double shooting, a message on an Instagram account apparently belonging to gunman Brinsley said, They take one of ours, let's take two of theirs. In a statement issued by the White House, U.S. President Barack Obama strongly condemned the incident. We are still learning the details. It's clear that this was an assassination. That these officers were shot execution style. A particularly despicable act which goes at the very heart of our society. The killing comes days after protests gripped U.S. over alleged cop brutality. Earlier this month, the court decided not to indict a U.S. cop who killed Michael Brown, an unarmed black teen from Ferguson. Brown and Garner's death and court's order in favour of the cops triggered nationwide protests. Bureau report, Rajasabha TV. Well, here's a look now at some of the other newsmaking stories from around the world in our world wrap. Tunisian president candidate uh, Beji Kaid Esibsi claimed victory in the presidential runoff election on Sunday. Preliminary results are still to be released by the election authorities. Esibsi took 39% votes in the first round ballot in November. Egypt opened the Rafah border crossing on Sunday for incoming passengers from the Gaza Strip for the first time in almost two months. Cairo closed the crossing on the 25th of October, the day after a suicide attack in North Sinai. Human rights groups have condemned Jordan for ending an eight-year moratorium on the death penalty. Jordan executed 11 men convicted of murder on Sunday. Well, after bringing you up to date with international news, it's time now to bring you up to date with all the sporting action from across sport arenas in the world. Here's the latest sports beat. Pakistani all-rounder uh, Shahid Afridi has announced his retirement from One Day Internationals after next year's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. The 34-year-old all-rounder has played 389 One Day Internationals. He will continue as Pakistan's uh, 2020 captain and wants to focus on winning the T20 World Cup in India in 2016. Fast bowler Rishan Sharma was fined 15% of his match fee for breaching the ICC's code of conduct. Sharma was uh, fined by in a foreign inappropriate language after dismissing Smith during Australia's uh, first innings on the third day at the Gabba. Media reports say that the 26-year-old admitted to the offence. Antoine Griezmann uh, scored his uh, first hat-trick for Atletico Madrid in the La Liga as the champions came from behind to win 4-1 at Atletico Bilbao on Sunday night. Miguel Rico had put the Basque uh, ahead in the 17th minute at a highly charged San Mames, uh, but Griezmann levelled for Atletico right at the start of the second half. Thiago Mendes won a hotly contested penalty which Raul Garcia converted and with the host chasing the game, Griezmann scored twice more on the counter-attack. Former World Heavyweight Champion boxer Muhammad Ali is uh, in hospital with pneumonia. He is said to be out of danger. Medical reports say it's a mild attack and Ali is expected to be discharged soon. Ali's health uh, steadily uh, deteriorated since his retirement from professional boxing in 1981. He was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in 1984. That's it on this edition of The Breakfast News. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.